Well, glory to God, sinners and saints. Wake up! Woo! <laughs> yes! Day 20 on the good old fat farm. I'm enjoying me just a few minute break here. I'm at work. Welcome to the big rig. Look at this. This is nice. Happy Friday, everybody. I didn't get a video done this morning simply because I had some business to attend to. So I got 15 minutes to wait for a loader to get off his lunch break before I can unload this truck. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a little church. I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to shout, shout, shout. I'm going to sing. Turn to John 3. I want to share something with you to encourage you to go into the weekend. John 3, John 3, John 3. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll be glad you did. Like these videos. Like, like, like. John 3. John 3. We're going to go John 3, 5, and 6. John 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to sing, sing, sing. You can... You can, you can have church any time that you want to. You really can. You can have church in 10 minutes. You know, this morning, you work Monday through Friday. You put in a lot of hours. You know, things are going to, you're not going to feel like, ah, ah. <laughs> but you stir that spirit, folks. I'm not, I'm not putting on a show. I sing, I shout, I praise God, call some people on the phone, feel better. Folks, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all going through something. Every single one of us are going through something. Not a one of you watching me right now that ain't got something going on. But let's go into Scripture here and let's, let's get fed the Word of God. John 3 and 5 said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Got to be born of the water, be born of the Spirit, the water that flows from the throne of God. Amen. There ain't no other way, folks. You got to tap into that living river that flows from the throne of God. Amen. I'll start spitting and preaching right here. As I'm telling you right now, as sure as I sit in this big old Peterbilt, that you have got to find a place in your mind when the devil comes along to attack you. Try to bring in a little bit of depression or, oh, woe is me. You've got to go and say, I am a born again child of God. And if you're not born again right now, there ain't no better day for you to get saved. Say, I put my faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I'm not sure what's going to go on with this life, but I'm battered and I'm broken. And the Lord will meet you there. There's, there's, no, there's, there's no question why you're watching this video. If you're not saved, continue on here with me. Jesus said in verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is the flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is the Spirit. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. He was a ruler of this time, part of the rulership that wanted to put Jesus Christ of Nazareth to death because he went against their religious institutions. He went against their ideas. He went against the religious and Jewish people of that time. Jesus being the Son of God in the flesh. There's not a one of you sinners out there today, one of you backsliders, or any of you born-again faithful Christians that aren't going through something and need some help from the Lord. And the Lord's drawing a sinner today. The Lord's drawing a backslider. A Lord is drawing somebody that has gone lukewarm in their faith to say, get back into the river of the living water that flows from the throne of God. There is no easier, softer way to navigate this life. There's no other way that you can go and buy a book off a bookshelf anywhere than getting a revelation of this scripture. If you're born in the flesh, you're going to desire the things of this world. If you're born of the Spirit in the water, when you're going down the road and it's just a gloomy day, you can say, <laughs> glory to God, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to shout, shout, shout. See how you sing and how you shout. There's a Spirit and a fire in me that I wouldn't have in the flesh. 
What I have inside of me only comes from the throne room of God. What I have inside of me is only from a spiritual realm that comes from someplace other than this planet, but it's called the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will never leave you nor forsake you. When you're my child, you are my child, and I'm going to be with you and endure all the way to the very end. And we've got to endure with Jesus Christ and make a decision of whether we want to be down or whether we want to be up, whether we want to hate that job or whether we want to love that job, because we're going to be grateful that we have income coming into our homes. And see, Jesus kept on saying, he said down here in verse 7, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. When we're born again and we are transformed into the image and newness of Christ, uh, it will, hey, will dwell in our temple. That's why we should be singing. There should be no misery. If there's misery in the temple, we need to pray. If there's unforgiveness in the temple, we need to go pray. If there's any kind of static that is coming through our brains, making us feel something different than wanting to have that river of living water that flows from the throne of God, then we need to pray. It's just that simple. You know, it's It's like going to Walmart. Think about this. You need something, and you go to Walmart. Whatever the need is. You need a favorite candy bar. Like, I got to have a favorite candy bar. It'll satisfy my life if I just get in there and get the right candy bar. You will go in there, and there'll be a thousand different kinds of candy bars. But how do you know which one is the right one? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost talking right now. We spend this life looking for candy bars, looking for sweet treats, looking for things to satisfy our flesh. But every one of us out there can identify with this one thing, that we have always tried something, and it may have worked for a little while. Alcohol may have worked. Food may have worked. Uh, anger, a bad relationship may have worked. Uh, but nothing will ever work like my Jesus. Oh, glory, I feel like that. Oh, man, I want to go out and preach a tent revival now. There is nothing like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because when you get born again, you will walk right into Walmart and you know where the candy bar is. You know where it is in the store. You know what it is. You know what it tastes like, what it feels like, and it sustains you forever. Because once you get the Holy Ghost, once you taste the good things of God, the Bible declares that it's better to have never known the good things of God than to have known and to walk away. It would have been better. Amen. That's like Jesus saying about going to hell. It's better if your eye offends thee to pluck it out and have your eye not make it into heaven and have your good eye make it in with that body than to have your whole body cast into the pit of hell because you're lusting. Same thing with the hand. It's better to go into the eternal kingdom of God with one hand and chopping off the other and making it depart from thee than to spend eternity in, in hell with everything. Folks, that is, that's the teachings of Jesus Christ. When we are not born again of the water and the Spirit, when we don't preach the water and the Spirit, and we continue a habitual state and pattern of misery, we wake up miserable, we don't pray about it. We go to work miserable, we don't pray about it. We go home miserable, we don't pray about it. When I tell you as a Holy Ghost filled preacher from the old paths and the old schools of the preacher that taught me the things, you stir that gift that's in you. Just like I stirred it this morning because the devil wanted to come by with some misery and bad thoughts. But I said, I declare in the name of Jesus that I am a born again, blood bought child of God. Amen. I'm born of the water and the spirit and I know where the living water is. And I'm telling you, the living water comes right here. When Jesus said you must be born again, when you're born again, you have full access to the throne room of God. 
You have full access to raise holy hands and say, I love you, Jesus. Oh, precious Lamb of God, I need some help right now. Woo, praise you, Jesus. Let the Spirit flow and you stir up that gift that is in you. That is what children of God do. That's what's missing in a lot of churches today and in modern Christianity is we want to be so well. We're just humble little meek sheep taking a beating from the wolves. No! <laughs> Amen! Not this person. Not this sheep that's a follower of God. Mm -mm, no. I'm telling you, my little fat farmers, there's something out there that you may have never seen in a church. It's called the move of the Holy Ghost and being born again to where you have power in you because the Spirit of God dwells in you. But you don't have to be sad or depressed anymore. You don't have to be broke as a joke. God will provide according to your needs, according to his riches and glory. That's real preaching right there. God's going to sustain you like right now, driving a truck. He's sustaining me. If I had a million dollars right now, I wouldn't even know what to do with it because it wouldn't even affect me. That's how much I've grown spiritually. I could literally take a million dollars and go hand it to a homeless person standing on the corner and not even bat an eye. I had a boss here recently. I took all the money out of my wallet and threw it in the trash can next to him. And he flipped out. I said, I don't care. I just don't care about that money. Because I'm not in bondage to the things of this world. That's what it means to be born again, folks, and growing in the spirit. Is when you're no longer in the bondage of the things the devil brings by. You're no longer into bondage to unforgiveness. You're no longer in bondage to depression and pain and addiction. You're no longer in that bondage because when you're born again, you're transformed into the image of Christ Jesus, which means you turn away from sin. If you're not turning away from sin and you're living in it and staying in bed with the devil, then you're not born again. And that is a harsh preaching term right there. But it needs to be said. Some of you out there today and going into this weekend, you need to really sit back and think, am I a follower of Christ? Could I be set free if I really dedicated my life to the Lord and became born again of the water and the Spirit? Could I have what that preacher has? I did that years ago. I looked at other preachers. I'm like, man, I'd love to have what they have. I'd love to have what they have. And it takes time. It takes growth. It takes day on top of day on top of day. But, honey, we don't know if Jesus will return today, tomorrow, or the next breath. I may not even finish this video before he returns to this earth. That's the urgency I preach under. Today's the day to get saved. Because when you stand before Christ Jesus, and he takes that finger, he's looking through the books, looking through the records, looking through the things we've done, good and bad, and then they're going to search and see if your name's written in that book of life. Will your name be written in that book of life? And I pray it is. This preacher wants you to have that name written in that book of life. Make sure you're born again. Make sure you're bearing fruits of the Holy Ghost and the evidence of the speaking in tongues and the evidence. I'm telling you, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Evidences of it will be prophecies, speaking in tongues, healings, diversities of gifts, gifts of wisdoms, gifts of helps, healings, you, all, the, all the gifts. You should be bearing a fruit of something in accordance with the Holy Word of God. And if you are, those are all signs of being born again. And I really I just felt compelled to just really put that out there on this video. Being a Christian means we've got to go to war every single day against that devil. And he's going to come against your flesh with all kinds of horrible thoughts. The only way we can counteract it is to stir up the gift. Glory to God. Get a big amen in there and just go, not today, devil. Not today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Amen. I hope that helps somebody. Praise God. I got to get in here and get unloaded. I love all of you out there today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do a special video I've been praying about, and we're going to do the uh, Sunday school video that will be posted on Sunday. I look forward to coming back to you tomorrow. I love you all out there today. Keep praying. Keep seeking the Lord. And keep doing the next right thing. 
and life's going to get a lot more better, a lot mo-mo better. Is that what I almost said? Amen. I love you all. See you tomorrow.